This video will be about every Black Panther suit in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We've seen th three main Black Panther suits so far and a few more that we'll discuss more a bit later. But first, let's dissect these three first. First is T'Challa's original suit that we saw him using in Civil War and early in the Black Panther movie. It's a vibranium weave combat suit, custom tailored for T'Challa. He had already been wearing it as a prince, even years before his father's death. And among its features are retractable vibranium claws, strong enough to cut through nearly everything, even leave scratches on Captain America's shield. It's bulletproof, capable of withstanding a rainfall of gunfire without even budging. Its only drawback is that it has to manually be put on like normal clothes. So that was T'Challa's original suit. Moving on to the next one, T'Challa's second suit, the upgraded one, the one we see throughout the Black Panther film, as well as in Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. He started wearing this one shortly after becoming king. It was designed by his sister Shuri, with all the features of the previous suit, plus upgrades. It utilizes Wakandan nanotechnology, enabling all the vibranium molecules to be contained within a single necklace and reconstruct itself whenever needed around the user. While accumulating energy from external impacts, it glows purple and that charged energy can be released all at once so it means it has this awesome defensive and offensive ability all at once so that was the upgraded suit of t'challa next is eric killmonger's suit the golden jaguar suit so this suit was worn by eric killmonger during his brief time as king of wakanda after taking over the throne it was originally developed by Shuri for her brother T'Challa alongside his second suit that we just mentioned. But T'Challa chose not to wear this suit, deeming its colours and design too conspicuous. And about its features, well it's pretty much the same as T'Challa's upgraded suit. Capable of instant manifestation, it absorbs and redistributes energy, but with a golden glow instead of purple. Now that we are done with these three, we need to mention two more Black Panther suits that made brief appearances. This here is T'Chaka's suit, seen at the beginning of the Black Panther movie. It was used by T'Challa's father, T'Chaka, during his young days as king. It's got a different design pattern compared to his son's suit, with golden linings instead of silver with the most obvious thing being that vibranium weave traditional Wakandan garment he wears outside the suit. Its features are presumably the same as T'Challa's first suit and it is known to us that in T'Chaka's later years he chose to focus on his duties as king and had passed the role of Black Panther to his son Prince T'Challa. So that was T'Chaka's suit. Next we have the Black Panther ceremonial outfit. So this is the ceremonial outfit seen during the duels at Warrior Falls. And as you see, the mask that T'Challa wore represents his tribe, the Panther tribe or the Golden tribe. This time he goes all traditional, without his armor and all of his powers stripped away. He would have to fight challengers to the throne on equal grounds. There's also another Black Panther suit shown, although not clearly seen, during the neatly animated opening of the Black Panther movie in the form of vibranium particles. We see Bashenga, the very first Black Panther and King of Wakanda, who was a warrior shaman who united the warring tribes of the land after being guided by the goddess Bast to discover the powerful heart-shaped herb. And speaking of previously unseen Black Panthers, remember that we actually saw many of them, although unnamed. When T'Challa went to the astral plane and met his father, the previous kings or Black Panthers were there chilling around either in human form or in panther form. 
And speaking of previous Black Panthers, we might as well talk about a possible future Black Panther, which is Shuri, T'Challa's sister. In the comics, she did take up the mantle and become Black Panther, but we don't know for sure in the movie what's going to happen. But as of right now, she's just a princess who's also the nation's leading scientist and she fights using the Black Panther vibranium gauntlets that she designed that can shoot powerful streams of energy. And there's also that MCU virtual reality video game, Avengers Damage Control. Although the story isn't recognized as canon, it's part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe line of video games. It features the emergence response suit that can be used by players. They were designed by Shuri and includes both a male and female version. What's amazing is that it combines Wakandan and Stark technology, giving a combination of Iron Man and Black Panther at once. Even the Iron Man style energy shield uh, manifests itself as a traditional Wakandan shield. And as a bonus feature, we're going to end this video with some concept designs that didn't make it into the final cut, created officially by hired artists for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. For the suit worn by King T'Chaka, father of T'Challa, we have some designs made by Andy Park and Rodney Fuantabella. About Andy Park's design on the left here, we see that he created a cowl and a cape for Black Panther, similar to the one from the comics, but the fully covered helmet is the one that made it to the final design. While the one that Rodney designed at the right here, he's the one who made that traditional sash that Chaka wore during the flashback, intending to make the suit look more traditional than the sophisticated look that T'Challa had. So we can conclude that T'Chaka's final design is actually a combination of many different designs that, re that were created by multiple artists. Next are the designs for T'Challa's first appearance in Civil War. The one made by Andy Park here, he made a fierce looking design, one that shows the superhero embracing his more animalistic qualities with fully prepared flexed clawed hands. And it's quite similar to the one made by J.S. Marantz here, with a more armor-like design, with its grey tight-fit base and black protective pads. Also those pointy ears, making it look a little too much like Batman. And on the right here is a design for the 2018 Black Panther movie, without a full mask and with a different looking necklace. For the villain Eric Killmonger's suit, he also had some alternative designs for his leopard light suit with patterns and glows that look different, including one that's purple here instead of gold. Even Shuri and her Black Panther gauntlets have other interesting behind the scene designs as seen from artists Tully Summers here and Constantine Sekaris. The one on the left here looks like a feminine version of T'Challa's suit but without any helmet and sleeves and we have alternate gauntlets beside it that looks more traditional hiding its advanced tech within it. But the one on the right is pretty cool too having similar short hair but with gauntlets that appear more futuristic and similar to the final product. We also have a behind the scenes unfinished rendering for T'Challa's suit in Civil War with a nice white look that also seems cool which reminds me that some people had speculated a white suit for the 2018 movie which was actually just a mannequin for the real suit. So that's the end of our very long video. Comment on which suit is your favourite and which person do you think is the best king of Wakanda. Thank you for watching and goodbye. You can also watch some of our other videos by clicking on the thumbnails on the screen here. Don't forget to subscribe.